I had so much fun making a video about the history of minimalism last week, specifically the art part, that I've decided to make a spin-off. Will it be so good that it overshadows the original? Or will it be buried and never spoken of again? This is Minimalism in Art. Zen as a practice is one of many sects of Buddhism. It's thought to have been introduced in Japan by Chinese settlers in the 7th century. Zen followers believe that meditation, or Zazen, leads to self-discovery and enlightenment. Minimalist principles such as appreciating what you have, not placing importance on things, and living peacefully are at the core of Zen, and this was reflected in the art of the time. Not all Zen art was minimalist in style, in fact some of it could be very detailed, but it all captured this philosophy. I apologise in advance for my pronunciations because although I have looked them up, I am not a Japanese speaker and I don't have faith that I will be saying them properly. It was Zen monks who took to ink painting, known as sumi-e, reflecting the simplicity and importance of empty space central to both art and religion. Bodhidharma crossing the Yangtze River on a reed by artist Kano Soshu is an elegantly simple ink illustration of Buddhist monk Bodhidharma, known in Japanese as Daruma. The image carries with it the mentality that you don't need extravagance to have a meaningful existence. This is a visual way of saying less is more. Pine Trees by Tohaku Hasegawa is made up of simple quick brush strokes to create space, layers and light. Japanese art is often accompanied by an inscription. In Japan this is called the San. This is often a brief description of the painting's subject or a cryptic comment meant to spur further contemplation and sometimes is a description of the artist or subject's life. I really like this style of art because I really love art that allows for interpretation. Ink is a very difficult medium to work with. It runs, so it's very difficult to create a delicate work of art with. And I love the addition of the inscriptions. It makes me think of when films have an abstract quote at the beginning of them that sort of sets up the tone. I think it's good to invite people to think more deeply about what they're looking at. Minimalism emerged in New York in the early 1960s amongst artists who were self-consciously renouncing recent art they thought had become stale and academic. Painters and sculptors avoided overt symbolism and emotional content, but instead called attention to the materiality of the works. Artists of this movement removed any suggestion of biography or metaphors of any kind. Which I get, and I know some people will connect with. You look at something and you only have to decide whether or not you find it pleasing. You don't have to worry about whether you're missing out on some hidden meaning. But I like hidden meaning. I think it makes things so much more exciting. I also think that art is largely, naturally, biographical. Even if I present something abstract, I've still made choices on what material, colours and medium to use. And all that will be linked with my intent as an artist and the decision-making impulses that are going on inside my brain. I just personally can't separate myself from my art. This denial of expression coupled with an interest in making objects that avoided the appearance of fine art led to the creation of sleek geometric works that purposefully and radically eschew conventional aesthetic appeal. Frank Stella is the artist who famously said, what you see is what you see. He really didn't want people to interpret anything from his art. But I doth protest. His breakout artwork was a series called The Black Paintings, each composed of concentric bands or stripes in black enamel house paint on raw canvas. So far, so straightforward. But this painting is called The Marriage of Reason and Squalor 2. That kind of invites interpretation. I looked into the backstory of the name, and according to smarthistory.org, it was Carl Andre, Stella's longtime friend and fellow artist, who first invented the title in 1957 for a series of his own pastel drawings that he destroyed. Because both men agreed the phrase was an apt characterisation of their lives as artists in New York City, Andre suggested Stella use the title for his painting. Art historian Caroline Jones notes that it is precisely the marriage of reason and squalor, the union of control and flow, the matings between differences, the pleasures of conjugation, that allows the procreation of meaning in the black paintings. I agree, Caroline. The marriage I take quite literally to mean unification. 
of reason I take to mean justification and telling yourself why you do something and squalor in the dictionary means a state of being dirty or unkempt usually from an influence of poverty or neglect. The unification of why you do something and dire circumstances. I think that tells you a lot about the artist and why they're practicing art. I just can't help but imply meaning. I know this isn't a painting, but another 60s minimalist work of art is Tony Smith's Die. It's a cube made out of steel. The name of the work, Die, could refer to the way in which it was cast, imply it's a singular dice, or indeed refer to death, like a command that will all follow through on some day. Die. The dimensions of the piece were determined, according to Tony Smith himself, by the proportions of the human body. So that does make me think of this in a morbid sense. I began thinking, what if there's a human body inside this cube? What if there's a Murder, She Wrote-esque kind of mystery where a person's gone missing and it turns out that they've been sealed inside this work of art? And then I wondered, what if the cube is haunted? I can't stop myself from making these interpretations. Pretty much as soon as minimalism came around, post-minimalism developed. Some post-minimalist artists sought to extend the minimalist's interest in creating art objects that do not have any representational function. They presented material in ways that seemed unprocessed or uncomposed, or the material drooped and sagged, clearly governed more by the character of the material rather than the artist's intentions. To distinguish it from minimalism's perceived concern with form and composition, this is referred to as anti-form. But other post-minimalists pursued very different goals. Many reacted against the earlier movements in personality, trying to inject sculpture once again with emotionally expressive qualities. Go team! While the formal and theoretical interests of this period are no longer so influential, many of the themes and strategies of post-minimal artists remain very current, making it one of the most enduring styles of the last half century. The true artist helps the world by revealing mystic truths. This artwork is modelled after neon advertisement signs, but acts as an advertisement of a different kind. The artist, Bruce Nauman, comments on high art, using the materials of low culture and advertising, which sets up a clash that questions old assumptions about the purpose of art and artists. I really like this. Something that I usually fangirl over is art that is about the thing and is the thing. The context matches up with the material. In Treachery of Images, Magritte tells us, this is not a pipe. He's saying, this is paint on a canvas arranged to look like a pipe. But with the true artist helps the world by revealing mystic truths, Nauman is saying, this is a statement about art presented as an advertisement, which is not art, which makes it art. This is what I'm here for. Riddles. <laughs> Why did I make a whole video about minimalism in art? It might seem like something abstract and not relevant to life right now, but life imitates art and art imitates life. I think humans are constantly influencing and being influenced, whether we're trying to or not. Our possessions, our living circumstances, our work circumstances, what we listen to, what we read, what we watch, everything that we take in around us informs who we are and what we do. You're a different person now to who you were at the start of this video. And to create something, whether that's a grand painting or a post on social media, is entirely informed by everything around you that influences you. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe to influence YouTube into supporting me. And if you know anyone who would enjoy this video, share it with them. Make some advertisement art, encouraging people to watch this video where they can learn that advertisement as art is a paradox. Or however you want to do it is fine. See you next time.